Hi, it's Jan Peter and I wish you all a happy 2022 or at least a happier 2022 than last year was for most of us. I am going to walk you through how to copy disk images from an SIO to SD to real life floppy disks on your Atari 1050 disk drive and vice versa today. It wasn't that easy to figure out how to do this and there are no conclusive walkthroughs I could find online so I decided to make a little video. I'm just going to show you my process uh, that worked for me in both directions, both making real life floppy disks from disk images and uh, copying real life floppy disks to disk images on my SIO to SD. The SIO to SD is a little device that allows you to insert SD cards and have a little menu system on this neat little device and it hooks up to an SIO port on your Atari 8-bit computer or your floppy disk drive as in this case. As you may know, I repaired this Atari 1050 disk drive in one of the last videos and the reason I wanted to copy uh, disk images to a real floppy disk was that I needed the diagnostics disks to uh, check this drive fully and I only had a disk image and of course I needed a floppy disk to run on the Atari 1050 itself to fully diagnose it and that turned out to be quite the problem and I searched some forums for things. I ended up using a version of my DOS that is capable of handling the uh, SIO to SD fine, even the fast loading capabilities that this has and it is also able to read and write multiple format disks from and to an Atari 1050 real disk drive. I'm going to use my DOS version 4.55 beta 4, which is actually the version that worked best for my purposes. Maybe there are other versions of my DOS that do the same. I'm going to link the version I used in the video description so you can use that too. And I'm going to show you the whole process now. So obviously the first thing you want to do is to download the disk image. It is linked in the video description and then put it on the SD card with your SD card reader on your modern day hardware, your PC or your Mac or whatever you are using. Yeah, you can basically just copy it on the SD card into the Atari directory and it's going to show up in the menu on the SIO to SD as we are going to see later. Thankfully the SIO to SD hardware can emulate multiple drives and you can switch off drives that you don't need and you can insert disk images into the virtual drives and use them as if they were a real life uh, disk drive. I'm going to set the SIO to SD to device number one and I'm going to set the Atari 1050 to device number two for this purpose so we can copy things across. Changing the device ID on these 1050 drives is actually super easy because uh, Atari put a little switch in here that I've shown you in the last video from the inside it's a dual switch. So you have one black switch in the front and one white switch in the back. I don't know if you can see it properly on camera. Uh, this is now set up to drive number one. And when I push the black one to the right, you can see the white one showing up in the background there, hopefully. And this is now set to device number two. So that's how easy it is, literally just flicking a switch. And of course, I'm connecting this up again to my Atari. This is an SIO cable that goes to one of the two connectors that the Atari 1050 has in the back. And I'm going to connect my SIO to SD to the other connector. It doesn't matter which connector you use for which device, they are just connected in parallel. So now we have everything connected up, the SIO to SD is hooked up to the 1050 and the 1050 is hooked up to the Atari. So these devices are daisy chained and are both part of the equation now. Let me take a couple of seconds to thank the sponsor for this video, PCBWay, my favorite manufacturer of prototype circuit boards of all kinds. 
They have excellent quality and deliver quickly and effortlessly to your door if you send them the Gerber files for a circuit board you want to have made. I highly recommend checking them out. Their service is excellent and they are friendly people to work with. So check out the links in the video description and visit PCBWay.com today. Back to the tutorial. So I'm turning on the Atari. That should give my SIO to SD power as well. And as you can see, I have international karate <laughs> inserted here. So the way you choose which file or which image you want to insert is by pushing the K2 button on here multiple times until you reach the image you want to reach. And if you want to go backwards, you hold on shift and push K2 so you can scroll through the menu like that. We are going to insert uh, our MyDOS 455. That's exactly the file that I'm going to link in the video description. So that's now inserted as my drive one. You can choose the drive ID you want to insert images into by pushing K1 and uh, scrolling backwards by holding shift key. We have drive one now with my DOS. I have set up my SIO to SD to not auto start the uh, menu that is on here. That's a little uh, program that displays a menu. You can set that up so that it only starts up if you hold down shift or the other way around. So maybe if you are in the standard configuration, you have to hold down shift while powering on the Atari. So you get this not auto booting thing going here. We're just going to boot up my DOS now. That's inserted here and I'm just going to push start on my Atari 800XL that I'm using here. This works the same for other Atari 8-bit computers. So it should now boot up my DOS. And uh, as with DOS disks, you have to enter DOS and press return. And it should start my DOS. The hardware setup is exactly the same for both ways, uh, copying things from floppy disk to disk images and for copying disk images to real life floppy disks. So yeah, the hardware setup is pretty much done at this point. We are going to select duplicate disk, letter J, and then we are asked for source and destination. And we're going to use our SIO to SD, which is ID 1 as a source, and we're going to use 2 as our destination disk drive. So, uh, yeah, you can enter now, press return, and we are going to insert both disks. One of which is going to be a virtual disk, so you can just uh, push the K2 button until you reach the disk image you want to copy to the disks. We are going to copy the diagnostics disk. That's our 1050 disk diagnostics. We're going to insert the image into drive one by pushing enter. And now it's inserted. So that's our uh, source disk inserted virtually into the SIO to SD disk drive emulator. And obviously we also need a real disk in our 1050 drive. This is just a double density, double sided standard floppy disk as you use in these 1050 drives. And now it's literally just a matter of pressing the return key and the copy process should start. And as you can see, the SIO to SD is reading and our 1050 is writing to the disk. And with this uh, MyDOS 4.55, it seems to handle all the different DOS formats that the Atari 8-bit line has fine. It just doesn't give me any issues. Just seems to work without any further hassle, which is really convenient. Yeah, and that's it. It's really fast as well, because the SIO to SD uses the standard configuration with a very fast fast loader set up. So yeah, we should now have a 1050 diagnostics disk in here. So what I'm going to do is to set the little switch in the back 
to drive one and try if this actually boots up from this disk we just copied from the disk file. The Atari 1050 is now set back to device number one and should be able to boot this disk up. Uh, we're going to turn this on without the disk in there. Ideally, insert the disk. Wait for it to stop spinning just to do it correctly and then I'm going to power on the Atari and it should actually boot up my 1050 diagnostics here. Hopefully. If the disk is not broken. <laughs> yeah, it runs fine as you can see. We booted this from the real floppy disk now. And yeah, as you can see, it does test things and the tests all pass. Actually, this uh, 1050 works as intended, thankfully, after repairing it. Okay, let me show you the other way around. Let's make a disk image from a disk. I'm going to set this Atari 1050 back up to device number two for that purpose, because that's the easiest way. And I'm going to hook up the SIO to SD, which we are again using as drive number one. So exactly the same setup. We are going to boot our MyDOS again from the SIO to SD, inserting the image in there, power cycling the Atari, and it's booting up my DOS again. I'm entering DOS again, and it should start up my DOS, and we are using our duplicate disk command again, this time from drive two, which is the real 1050 to drive one. And it asked me to insert both disks. In order to insert a virtual blank disk into the SIO to SD, we hold down shift and push enter. We can turn the drive off, device number one. We can also push enter again. And now it says empty. So we now have an empty disk file in here that we can just copy stuff to. And now it's just a matter of inserting the real disk you want to make a disk image of into the real disk drive and hitting return. This should be relatively quick as well, this way around, although we have the real 1050 being the bottleneck here, speed wise, I guess. But yeah, it's just behaving like a real life drive now and it's using the file name new 0000 ATR. So it's making an ATR disk image file. And it's actually formatting the disk image before it starts copying to the exact format that your disk is in. At least I didn't run into any issues with any formats I tried with this method. So it should probably just work for every format that's out there with my DOS 4.55. And that takes a bit longer because the Atari 1050 is the speed of a real 1050 because it is. Okay, that should be it. And we should now be able to boot our disk image from the SIO to SD. So I removed the disk from the real disk drive and yeah, we have our disk image automatically inserted in the SIO to SD. Have the startup screen. Yeah, we should now be able to just push the start button and as you can see it's booting up our disk image. And you can of course rename this on a computer if you insert the SD card into a computer. I don't have the joystick connected so I can't show you my non non-existent skills in Pitfall again but uh, yeah this proves that we made a disk image from this disk from the 1050 to the SIO to SD. Yeah, this file is just on the SD card now and of course you can insert another empty file and copy another disk across if you boot up my DOS again. Yeah, that's the way I managed to copy disk images to real floppies and vice versa. So really straightforward if you know what you're doing, which wasn't actually that easy to figure out because, yeah, as I said, I didn't find any conclusive tutorials about this process. So I decided to make one. Hope this is useful. If you have other methods that work, please 
put them in the comments. There's too little information about these things, especially uh, with the Atari stuff out there. I think that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this was informative and maybe helpful to some of you who want to do the same. I guess there's people out there who want to use real life floppy disks or who want to save their floppy disk collection to modern media and use it in an emulator, which you of course can do with these disk images that you make this way. Thank you very much for your support on Patreon and on the channel memberships page here on YouTube. Hope to see you again on this channel sometime. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.